Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Adam RPG with me, Bring It Don. Uh, sound should be back to normal, in case you guys missed my comment on the last episode. Uh, my gain on my microphone had adjusted itself. That's, I guess, one of the downsides to upgrading is this one is controlled more by software, where my last microphone had more manual inputs, and this one is more susceptible to Windows updates and other anomalous software issues. The worst part was is I did a sound test beforehand, I noticed that my voice was quieter, but I had dismissed it as me like turn my head to the side during it or something um but that's what happens when you get complacent i guess so something else to look look out for as i play with my new microphone well, let's talk to this lady a mysterious woman in red greets you with a half smile and barely perceptible inclination of her head resting her fingertips on your shoulder she looks deep into your eyes presumably satisfied with what she sees the woman addresses you welcome to my emporium stranger are you selling anything? I don't see any merchandise. I'm not selling anything, at least not here. I am buying. The things I choose to purchase are quite rare, but I'm willing to pay a good price. Are you a drug dealer or something? No, no, no. You've got it all wrong again. I'm not interested in illegal goods. On the contrary, I'm interested in items one cannot find on any restricted list. I'm a dealer in artifacts. Do you know what I'm referring to? I can't recall. Tell me more. The woman contemplates your reply for a minute. When she finally begins to speak again, she does so very slowly, as if thinking over each word. Everything in our world can be explained. Everything has its own internal logic. Oftentimes we know why certain things have happened, and other times we can make an educated guess. But sometimes, some things happen that cannot be explained. For example, items that shouldn't exist. I call such items artifacts. Uh, give me an example of an artifact. A long, long time ago, a young woman sought shelter from the rain beneath a pile of hay. The rain kept falling and she soon fell asleep. When she rolled over, she was awoken by a prick. She had been stung by a sewing needle. The needle was threaded through a ribbon with that same woman's name embroidered on it. No more context, no additional information. Just that needle in the haystack, a ribbon with a name on it, and nothing else. The nearest village was long abandoned. Hmm, what happened next? Uh, the woman put the needle away in her bag and took it with her. The next morning she woke up to another prick. The needle was in her bed again. From that day on, the same thing happened every night, unless there was someone else present. Those times, the needle stayed put. Something as simple as a working camera uh, could have been a witness. All this could be explained as a rare case of sleepwalking or forgetfulness. But the needle moved even if the woman's hands and feet were tied. I assume the woman in the story is you. What makes you think that? No, the story isn't about me. It's just a curious anecdote from the realm of artifacts. Well, anything is possible in this world. The woman nods her agreement and studies you closely. Listen, I'll tell you something I tell all the local stalkers. If you come across an artifact during your travels, bring it to me. I'll give you a better price than any merchant in the wasteland. How will I know which items you're interested in? Let's just say that you'll f you will feel these things. It should be obvious. The exceptions are rare. And what do you do with these artifacts? Do you resell them? Well, you could say that, yes. Uh, who buys them? I mean, if you're allowed to disclose that kind of information. I am not. Sorry. Uh, where should I look for these artifacts? Do you have any tips for me? Unfortunately, I can't help you with that. These items are special, after all. Well, thanks for the lecture. This is surely something to think about. Uh, thinking about stuff, and brain activity more generally, help prevent early-onset Alzheimer's. <laughs> no need to thank me. A stalker told me a story about a wooden plaque that had the word burn carved into it. The woman stiffly raises a hand to stop you. I know this thing you are referring to has already been sold to me. That's all you need to know. I just want to ask you some questions about everyday life and so on. Sorry, but I'd rather not answer. My job requires me to keep a certain professional distance. In that case, I need to go through my things. Maybe I'll find something interesting. I try. I need to warn you. 
I don't just want to buy an object from you. I want to know the story of how you came across it. That's very important. Remember this too. By telling me the story, you automatically agree to hand, over, hand the artifact over. I have a golden nut here. Tell the story of the nutcracker. The woman listens in... Sorry, the woman listens quietly to your story about a battle with a vicious rat and the unexpected usefulness of a tin saber. Finally, she nods and takes the golden nut from your hands. What a complicated story. The golden nut found in the teeth of a nutcracker. Fascinating. Yeah, I surprised myself when I found this nut. The woman turns the golden nut over in her fingers, examining its glimmering surface from every angle. Indeed. In any case, you brought me an item and a story to boot. Just take the money. A thousand and three rubles. Way more than market value. Yeah, because you only get like, what, 300 or 400 for it? It's a pretty good deal. Now you be so kind as to leave me alone. I'm waiting for a client who will take this golden walnut off my hands. I think they don't want to draw attention to themselves. In that case, I'll catch you later. Come back in a day for... Okay, well that's... Darn it. Alright, also, I walked past this NPC, an NPC in the tavern, twice last episode. Which is funny, because he's the first guy that I saw right here. But he blends in with the barrels, so when I walked back out, I just ignored him. Hopefully his stalker name is Beryl, since he looks like one. A smiling, round-faced man is looking around, as if trying to pick someone out from the stalker crowds. He stops his search to address you before you even approach. Hey there, my name is Stanislaw. You can call me Ujirad. Uh, nowadays, people keep calling themselves Boris the Bull or Constantine the Crusher, trying to seem intimidating. But I've chosen a nickname in honor of my hometown. I don't know if you agree, but I personally think this is a good reason for you to buy something from me. <laughs> what a bunch of empty nonsense. Did the radiation sickness mess with your head? Uh, this buddy of mine once stuck his head in a pile of uranium on a bet. Since then, he kept singing obscene limericks, and his eyes no longer blink at the same time. May God have mercy on his poor soul. Nah, Pops. Radiation has nothing to do with it. I was born radioactive. Ha ha ha. Ugh. This is clearly... <laughs> this is clearly delirium speaking. Textbook glossolalia. Terrifying. He's burned up on the inside. A mere shadow of a man. Cut the crap, Pops, and buy something. Uh, what is it that you're selling? Just ask. I'm looking for a conversation. Sure, we can talk. Talking is, after all, an integral part of my business. Who are you? Stanislaw Uzerod is a gossip monger who learned how to turn a profit on rumors. Yes, that's me. I see. Uh, one more question. What are you doing here? I like to talk. I occasionally work as a stalker too, but rarely. Hey, talker and stalker are almost the same, aren't they? Ho ho. Anyway, I'm almost entirely out of that game now. Information is worth a lot of money these days, comrade. More than some half-rotten junk anyway. It's a good job. One more question. Uh, what can you tell me about this place? Some view it as a cesspit, an ulcer in the city's hide, a harbor for all the stinking beggars, destitute drunks, and serial killers. But I see it as a place to make money, a place where interesting data is being bought and sold. In other words, it's business. Do you know what business is? Nah, don't answer. That's one way to put it. Here's a question I have. Got any good rumors to share? Come on now. Would you walk into a bar and ask for free booze? So why are you asking Stanislaw Uzerod, gossip mixologist extraordinaire, for free rumors? Start talking business, and you'll find out everything you want to know. Alright, but let me ask you something first. Let's change the subject. Fine. Tell me what's on your mind. Let's talk trade. The man's smile grows wider than usual, and he cracks his knuckles like a professional pianist. Right now I have three items for sale. Stop looking around. I don't carry any bags because what I'm selling is information. I can share a rumor about a secret organization. I can tell you some gossip about world famous celebrities. Or I can give you a tip about a profitable venture. But I'm not sure about that last one. Plus it might involve some fighting. So I'm selling it for 500 rubles. The first two are a thousand each. These prices are final. No haggling. The information dealer thinks for a while. Then slaps himself on the forehead and says, I almost forgot. I heard a practically useless rumor recently, which I can let you have for free, just to show that I'm serious, and to give an idea of what kind of goods I offer. 
How about you share the free information with me? You want to hear that nonsense? Sure. As long as you're okay polluting your brain with useless info. The new password to enter the looter's base is Jigan or Jigan. Got it? Jigan. But why would you want to visit those swine? But now they know what all us stalkers look like, so they won't let you in even if you have the password. Alright, I want to buy information about the secret organization. Stanislaw Ozirad quickly counts the bills and gestures you to come closer. I won't repeat myself. As soon as the information leaves my mouth, I immediately forget it. How do I do this, you ask? Professional know-how. But as I said already, I won't repeat myself. Anyway, Adam deniers, such as those at the very top of the Krasno administration, always argue that should Adam really exist, someone would have discovered their base long ago. But what if I were to tell you they were looking in all the wrong places? Adam isn't an army project. It's a navy project. And for that reason, it's located on a gigantic submarine. A nuclear submarine. Atomic, if you will. Hence the name. Now, by the way, they recently lost a whole fleet of reconnaissance vessels, led by the disgraced sailor Goryashev. And now their paramilitary divers are actively infiltrating our post-Soviet society in order to hunt down him and his crew. This is 100% true. I heard it from the lips of one of those same divers near Ultranoye, on my way to the dead city. A big guy, wearing a navy blue beret, which obviously is no coincidence. Um, now who could that be? Exactly. He had the he had exactly the same beret as you, but his nose was different. Or not. I don't have much of a memory for facts. Or faces. <laughs> Alexander lets out a terrified grunt and quickly turns away from the merchant. Good job, Alexander. All right, 1,000 rubles well spent. Mm-hmm. Should we change the subject now? All right, uh, let's talk trade. Sure, my pleasure. You know what I'm selling from the last time we spoke, so go ahead and place your order. I've always had a thing for celebrity, celebrity gossip. Take my money. Stanislaw Ujirad smiles as he tucks your rubles away in an inside pocket. Between us, the death of veteran restaurant critic Ramsey's at the hands of various wasteland chefs was a somewhat exaggerated affair. Reality... He settled in Trudegrad to open his own cozy little eatery. It's rumored that if you say the word eclair before ordering, you'll get a nice discount from the chef, who was hated by waiters and cooks from Kamchatka to the hero city of Minsk. Hmm, that was definitely worth it. Let's change the subject. I wonder if that's going to carry over to the uh, Trudegrad expansion. Alright, fine. Give me your cheap hint. Here's 500. Stanislaw Ujirad looks indecisively at your money for a moment, but takes it anyway. Okay, but don't blame me if the goods are faulty. I gave you a discount. People say that one of the local looters, Maxim is his name, disappeared somewhere in the depths of the metro tunnels. Where and why, I have no idea, but the man himself is well, I know well. He's loaded with all kinds of items. If you get him out of whatever trouble he's landed in, he won't be stingy with the reward. Alright, well I changed my mind about doing business with you, talk about something else, and bye. Alright, cool. That was an expensive little venture, but hopefully that pays off well. Well the the Ramsey's one probably won't, at least not in this in this uh, part of the game. Maybe when we get to True to Grad that'll That'll help us. It's like that little dragon statue. Should probably quick save before I do this. Oh well, just not mad about it. Shut that behind me. Sweet. A turban. That's the first time we found a turban.
All right, let's talk to this guy. I will take that stimulant off your hand. All right, well-built man with a chiseled physique looks around 40, greets you with a smile and a nod. You quickly notice that he's rather strange looking somehow. Maybe it's his gaze. This huge fella who can easily turn out to be a mercenary or a bandit is looking at you with the sense of a childlike play and innocence. It reminds you of an Albert Einstein photograph you saw in a textbook as a teen. The man then starts talking, and his tone quickly proves that he is indeed rather extraordinary and eccentric. Um, 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 Excelsior. A hello to you, fellow human. My name is Professor Vodkin, and you are? Oh, don't tell me. You are a stalker, too. Sure. It shows, right? Professor Vodkin nods. Oh, indeed it does. Well, how can I help you, Comrade Stalker? And can I? Because, um... Well, because I don't offer jobs. I don't sell things. I just live here. And that's that. Great. I'm simply looking for a conversation. Excelsior, uh, what is on your mind? What is this Excelsior? Ah. Oh, nothing special, my friend. It's just a word I kept using when I was but a mere student to make myself look smart and educated. Nowadays, as you can see, I'm an important thinker, scientist, and creator. But above all else, I'm a passionate, childlike innovator. Yet I still keep using that word, because it grew on me. Excelsior. I see. Okay then, next question. Uh, what do you do here? Professor Vodkin looks around. Well, if you're that interested, maybe... Maybe I'm secretly continuing the experiments which led to my exile from my hometown. Maybe I'm trying to create an elixir that will grant amazing powers to those who use it. Maybe I even have this... Maybe I even have it in this very syringe right here. So I wonder if this guy is supposed to just be a reference to uh, Stan Lee. Stan Lee would say Excelsior. Uh, the professor swiftly produces a huge metal syringe and lifts it above his head as if ready to stab you. Excelsior, want to try it out? I don't usually allow myself such generous propositions. The professor looks at the contents of his syringe and licks his dry lips as if thirsty for the substance. After I added several, hmm, very special components to the formula, I became a little bit hooked on this stuff. But you don't need to know such things. So, will you try this amazing product, my friend? Oh child, please, for the love of God, do not suck on the teat of this foul man's syringe. Look at him lick his lips. The thing probably contains heroin, the drug that destroyed a generation. A generation of godless capitalists, but still. USSR, by the way, had no drug problem whatsoever. Well, there was the one light recreational drug we loved to use. It was love. Love for the country, for your mother, for your neighbors. For the giant lines to the potato store. For Comrade Brezhnev's political decisions. Oh, and it takes only so little for love to become hatred. Remember this, my child. Love is a mask hatred wears. There's no heroin in the official formula. None whatsoever. No heroin. Um, according to me. People like to badmouth my research. And that includes myself. Uh, sometimes, when I'm completely stoned by this concoction, and I'm stumbling around in this place naked, I shriek about my formula actually containing heroin and other terrible, terrible substances. But it's all lies. Lies, I tells you. Wow. Old man Hexogen finally found someone with a similar weird speech pattern. Weird. Excelsior. <sighs> I'm not afraid, Hex. Stick it in me, Professor. Just don't miss the vein. The professor stabs the needle straight into your carterid artery and pushes in the plunger. Amazing. Thank you kindly. Now please have a little stroll. Maybe take a trip into the tunnels so that the formula might settle in your body and start the changes in your biochemistry. Okay, I'll keep an eye on my health. Hope this thing will work eventually. And now another question. Sure. Uh, what can you tell me about this place? <coughs> this place is reminding me of my old lab cage full of white rats. I used for cruel and unusual experiments. Just change the cage into a metro station, rats into stalkers, and experiments into heavy drinking and ruin looting. Oh, and take me out of the picture. This analogy made no sense. The sense of it was that I missed my old lab. Oh, it was so beautiful. The Novgorod uh, University City would die of envy. 
Uh huh. Well, there's here's another question for you. Got any good rumors to share? Rumors, rumors. The only rumors you hear in Dead City are about some stalker shooting some other stalker and getting eaten by a mutant. Why can't these brutes be more peaceful? You can get what you want without violence, and that's a fact. All you need is a plan, an idea. Ideas are amazing. Ideas are like currency. Ideas are what drives the world. Ideas are what we need to get to the next stage. I'll take those so-called scientists from Krasno, the Mycelium Society. They managed to get political power without a single shot. A few years ago, they just had a few members, and look at what they accomplished with no weapons. People believe in... People believe in them, love them, visit their free meal giveaways. That proves to me that sometimes great ideas are actually horrible ideas. Excelsior. Well, thanks for sharing. One more thing, change the subject. Why do you live here? You know, stalker, are you? Professor Vakin sighs and looks to the floor. Yes, um, no I'm not. I was expelled from my hometown by the True to Grad elite. They conducted searches in my lab. They fined me. They publicly humiliated me. I had to run. I swear, the brutes who burned Copernicus at the stake were ordered to cut Galileo's feet off, who fed Da Vinci to the flesh-eating insects. They somehow found out a recipe for immortality and are still ruling over us honest scientists. Okay. And that's it. Alright, I have to go. Bye. I'm sure that's not gonna have any negative consequences, taking a mysterious serum from a guy who obviously knows what he's doing. Alright, 21 rubles. I will take those off your hands, buddy. Wait, better yet. Actually, you know what? Let's go all out here. 201. It's a little too much. Let's get rid of some of these uh, more miscellaneous items, I think. Yeah, that'll work. Alright, sturdy bellowed... Sorry, <laughs> sturdy bellowed. A sturdy bearded fellow, you know his bomb smiles good-naturedly, and raises a hairy hand in greeting. Hiya, detective. Now what do you do here, big man? I guard Kurds, our boss. He's a smart guy. That's why his life and health are in constant danger. If he gets distracted and forgets to keep an eye on his surroundings, God knows what disaster might befall him. I'm here to do the looking around for him. Uh, what do you think about this crazy killer, the woodpecker? The guy's sick. His victims aside, although they really shouldn't be set aside. He deserves to be pitied. People don't turn into maniacs for no good reason. It's not due to an excess of happiness. That's my opinion, at least. Do you have any? Do you have any advice? The same advice I give to all newcomers: give yourself a ticket back home ASAP. But if you decide to stay, move underground. The radiation's weaker down here. And there's, there are no dust storms. We do have monsters, gangsters, lunatics, weak shoring, hidden traps, and a bunch of other dangers. But you can at least try to avoid those. If you get caught in a dust storm on the surface, no special skill will save you. Uh, you too. Keep well. Bye. <laughs> okay, that wasn't really a response to what he said, but... Sure. Let's see if I can get inside this desk. Probably not. It's just waste paper. 210. Let's see. Oh, so close. My cards are sitting behind a large desk, most likely taken from the city library, or maybe from the office of some party big shot. The head of station makes a steeple with his hands and nods to you. Any progress on the case? Uh, not really, no. I wanted to ask a couple of questions. Sure. What would you like to know? Uh, tell me about this station. People use these metro ruins and station to shelter from the dust storms on the surface. It's one thing avoiding an irradiated area in the city. You just walk around. But when radioactive dust is blowing into your ears, eyes, and mouth, that's a different kettle of stewed rat. 
If you were Rad Zero, it was no good to you then. Or I guess Rado. That sounds nasty. One more question. What would you like to know? What do you know about the dead city? Very creepy place. Some stalkers claim to hear voices coming from the abandoned buildings. Fragments of conversation, laughter, sobbing. As if memories of lives long gone linger in the beams and bricks. Shadows of the past. One more question. Heard any ju juicy rumors lately? Are some stalkers recently encountered the legendary monster Kukish and barely managed to escape with their lives? But taking into account all the stories I've heard about this beast, I figure they must be lying, right? It can't be that easy to escape such a monster. Unless you've got a motorcycle. Uh, who knows? I have one more question. Are there any interesting places to visit in the city? Sure, there are many. However, the inhabitants likely don't know all of them. And my advice is to ask the stalkers about it. I've been so preoccupied with my desk duties lately that I'm completely out of the loop. Alright, thanks for the advice. Let's change the subject. Kurz opens one of his desk drawers, gazes down a moment at the bottle of vodka inside, sighs, and nods to you. Tell me what you know about the woodpecker. I would be asking around for help if that wasn't the case. This maniac is stringing us along, making us into fools. I'm sure he thinks we're all a bunch of helpless morons. That's okay. He'll get caught. It's inevitable. I hope you're right, but as of now, we don't have a lot on him. How long has the woodpecker been active? It's been a couple of months since we discovered the first body. We don't really know how long he has been active. People in the dead city come and go, and some of them drop dead from radiation poisoning. How many victims are there? Have there been any survivors? As of right now, the woodpecker has killed at least 20 people, but the true number may be much higher. So far, there have been no known survivors. And what about the murder weapon? Is it a knife? Looks like he uses a knife to torture his victims. It's been speculated that he doesn't outright kill his targets, but tortures them first, then punctures their skull and leaves them to die. If that's true, it's absolutely terrifying. Alright, I need some time to think. Let's change the subject. Uh, who put you in charge of this operation? No one. Somebody had to step up. And why did it have to be you? Someone had to. Most of the stalkers are just slackers and misfits, but some of them are really serious people. Together, we've created a kind of order for the community. Well, thanks for the answer. I have to get going now. Alright, let's uh, take care of... Last of these artifacts real fast. We're just going to wait in place and speak to her. My <laughs> god, does not sound like he is doing well. Alright, so radiation has increased. Let's just go ahead and take one of these things. Actually, what we can do is probably just take alcohol, honestly. Oh, it didn't help it with the radiation. Whoopsies. Alright, I guess I didn't have to take alcohol. Let's, uh... <laughs> or is it over time? I forget, because I hardly ever take alcohol. Here, we'll just do it this way. It's, oh, I guess I have to leave and come back. Well, I want to finish this up before we start exploring elsewhere. I don't want to forget to come back and do it. I doubt that I would, but still. This is the first time I've ever thrown up from radiation in the game. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so the underground is like a whole... It's like a, as a map, or like an overworld map. That's interesting. I'm gonna see if she's done with this now, because it's been a day, and I left it and reset the map. Oh, uh, that's not her place, is it? Yeah, it is. I see the curtains. The mysterious woman looks tired. She works hard to produce a smile and says in a mel melodious tone. 
Ah, it's you again. How may I help you? Or how can you help me? Uh, we've already read that. Alright, I'll look at this little stone. Tell the story of how you found the Pale Paleolithic Venus. You tell her about your misadventures in the roaring forest and the tunnels beneath. The woman listens politely, but at the end shakes her head and returns the figurine to you. Sounds like a fascinating adventure, and this figurine would most likely be of great interest to historians, but it's not for me. Sorry, I'm more interested in special items. What is special? I don't know what else I would do with that. A look at this jade figurine. Tell the story of how you helped out Rudolph, who was stuck in a dream realm. The woman doesn't seem to be listening. She stares at the ominous figurine unblinkingly, mesmerized by its strange extraterrestrial form. When you finish the story, the artifact merchant looks up at you with great effort, stretches her face into an unconvincing smile, and reluctantly takes Rudolf Karpov's gift from your hands. What a weird thing. Haha. <laughs> Maybe it isn't an artifact at all. Now that's for you to decide. I'll tell you the story of how I got it. The woman abruptly drops the figurine and hops away as if it if it had burned her. Her eyes go round and her lips begin to twitch. All the blood is draining from her face, but then the seizure passes. The mysterious woman quickly pastes the fake smile back on her face and hastily counts out your money. Haha, no. This is a real artifact. Thanks for the story. Here's your money. A thousand and three rubles. Then I have to wait for the next buyer, and I'm sure he'll be quite a character. Thank you. You can go now. Come back later if you find any other interesting artifacts, alright? Whatever you say, I think what you really need is an artifacts, but a mild sedative. Why is she acting so weird? I wonder if there's like a, an actual quest, if I get all the, all, yeah, if I can get all the artifacts that she's willing to buy, if there's like a culmination. Let's clear out these back rooms real fast. Then what I'll do is off camera, I'm gonna go and sell all the stuff that I've been collecting around the metro to the guy that I bought the hazmat suit from. Try to make back some of that money, and then in the next one we will Begin exploring the the tunnels. I think that's everything. I don't think I missed any other NPCs. It was just the one guy that blended in with the barrels up here. Pretty sure I've spoken to everybody else. Yeah. Pretty sure I have. If not, I'll catch it off camera. I'll go back around the metro one more time, make sure I didn't miss anything else. Because this is a new area for me. So there's plenty to discover. Anyway, I'm going to call the episode here. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.